turn the mic up a little bit for me. Testing. Testing one, two. Testing. All right, here we go. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is John Koppelmeyer, and I'm the executive director of the Arts Council. And uh, we are very appreciative that everyone is out here tonight for our um, spoken word spotlight show. Um, I think this is, might be the third or fourth one that we've done um, of, of doing poetry and spoken word. And it's always been a really good time. You know, uh, people who do spoken word and poetry, they're really sharing their thoughts and feelings. And, and, uh, and there is a bunch of talented people out there who have an ability to do that. And you're going to listen to nine of those folks tonight. Um, so sit back, have a good time. There's some drinks and uh, uh, treats in the, in the main room. Also bathroom out there. Feel free to grab, up, grab any of that. But we're going to start with the first lady who is just maybe the sweetest woman in the world. I mean, every time I'm with her, she's always positive. She always has a nice thing to say about myself, anyone that she comes in contact with. She's just a sweetheart. So please welcome um, Natalie James. short either. Okay. Pleasant good evening to each and everyone. My name is Natalie Ramos, aka Trinilicious, and I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. So my first poem is called The Beast. They call me Trinidicious, but I call myself The Beast because I aim to please. You see, I'm beautiful, enthusiastic, ambitious, strong, talented, and I'm a sister. But if you cross my path, get ready to feel my rot. You see, once upon a time I was taken for granted, but now I'm enchanted, and like a fairy tale, I'm about to show you what I do, making your dreams come true. So wake up, haters, because the clock is ticking. Life lesson. Quote, Life is not always going to go your way. You first have to go your own way and then take life lessons with you on that journey towards success. Have you ever wondered what life lessons should be? Have you ever pondered on the things you can see? Have you ever given a stranger a chance, hoping and praying for some kind of romance? Do you ever wish that dreams would come true and that real happiness exists and no one was ever blue? Tell me, have you ever thought that life lessons could be real and this poem could really express the way that you feel? There comes a time when you will question yourself and the answer you want to hear will come from someone else. The life lesson you learn will now be nothing but sublime and will forever stay with you till the end of time. Thank you. My second poem is called, In God We Trust. In God we trust, yet we choose to follow mere man's advice. I repeat, if Jehovah we claim to obey, but like Eve, we still chose to partake in the world's apple. And mind you, I'm not talking about the phone, because that alone is a fake book dream by itself. You see, we walk around with our heads held high, acting like we have so much pride, but by a mere cough or sneeze, we already think we got the COVID disease. But, but, but yet in God we trust, but the Bible is the last book we care to read. Now tell me, how does it feel if the one person who has our back is the same one if the tables were turned, faith we lack? And this has nothing to do with being white or black. Because my father in heaven did not see color. In the humans, he made to love and respect one another. So if in God we trust, why are the church doors still closed? And while we still so scared to die, wasn't his son a good example for you and I? Mm -hmm. 
And my last poem tonight, um, since it's Black History Month, I wanted to do something called a pong, which is a poetry and song in one. So it's going to be um, a Bob Marley redemption song. And the poem is called Freedom. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Have no fear for atomic energy, because none of them can stop the time. How long shall they kill our prophets while we stand aside and look? Some say it's just a part of it. We got to propel the book. So won't you help to sing the song of freedom? Because all I ever have, redemption songs, redemption songs. Freedom. How do we define freedom? Is it from B-L-A-C-K? Beautiful, loyal, ambitious, creative human beings? Or is it from W-H-I-T-E? Wonderful, hardworking, intelligent, talented educators. You see, who gets to determine who's right from wrong? Who decides which race is fit to wear the crown? The Mexicans, Asian, Latinos, Chinese, Indians, or more? Because where I come from, we don't keep a score. You see, freedom can be as little as the girl on the streets who is struggling every day to find something to eat. Freedom can be bondage from an abusive spouse that no longer wants you or the kids in his house. As these are just a little facts because freedom is the finances and money we lack. So you see, that have nothing to do with being white or black. Just like a crayon box, colors should be mixed, and like a beautiful rainbow, unity should exist. But until we can come together like Bob Marley's redemption song, that's only how, as a nation, we all can stand strong. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Pretty good singing, too. I'll have to get you up here on Artist Spotlight Show. That was good. All right, our next, oh, oh before I introduce that next artist, I also want to um, start thanking some of our sponsors. Um, we have sponsors that help us put on um, our Artist Spotlight Shows. We do um, a artist series. The series that you see here is the um, Ardo County um, Photography Club. Um, we do 10 concerts a year. We also have an artist spotlight show, which is um, like this, um, but for young, for young artists or for artists to play their original music in a listening room format. And we wouldn't be able to do any of that we, if we didn't have our sponsors. And this year we have a, um, a title sponsor in Dustin McCray's law office. So I want to give him a shout out and thank you. Thank him for that. All right, so our next artist is somebody I think I've known since first came to Statesville. I think it was in a Rotary meeting when her and two other women had pig noses or something. What was, what was that? Did you? What, the, Dixie, the Dixie hands? Yeah, a long time ago. Very entertaining. Um, she's been involved in um, all kinds of stuff in our community for years, and we're very grateful to have her here. So please welcome Christy Darling. Thank you, John. That was a nice introduction. Um, I want to start just by saying I've been starting to read Joan Didion again after her recent death, and I want to share with you something she said about writing. Joan said that grammar is a piano I can play by ear, and that I take to heart when I write. So I write stories about and poems about things that have happened to me that caught my attention that I want to pay more attention to. I wrote the first poem in the middle of the night after talking to a friend of mine who lived on the West Coast when the fires were approaching his town in Talent, Oregon. And we talked all night until the fires got to his town. So this is called Visioning Talent, Oregon. And your village shingles untethered 
flown to dust, sift the ruins of cities. Sleep, pleasures of the skin, clear skies are your last memories beyond the boxes of photos in the back of your car. Damp jade grass, first crimson, then crisped, then nothing. Gone bedrooms, kitchen tables, ghosted chimneys, the television melted among deserts of bed frames. And remember white cotton sheets and damp bath towels on the floor? Streets laid to ash, pitting your eyes. The dust of your abstinent mouth speaks for itself. No notion left of your own open throat, silent in its instant of closing. How will you, so unplanted, not sleep, not laugh, not breathe the now hours, and tomorrow night, staggering hope, like embers sailing away towards stars swept away, blinking brilliantly, diamonds gone red, gray, then black. Spirit lifts endlessly. The horizon becomes a distance closeness, and stinging salted cheeks suck in while lips are licked like bone again. The petition of thousands arrive struggling towards safety through smoked voices dreaming. The bees stir again. The seeds awaken. Help us today. Pray strength. Tomorrow comes rain and more strength. So when I was preparing for tonight, I realized that over the years, I've written quite a lot about death and dying. And so I'm going to read one of those. This is about my mother's death. And she died peacefully at home, as they say, surrounded by family. Thank you, John. Oh, gosh, that's really different. <laughs> I'm pretty loud. You could probably hear it anyway, right? So this is called Last Room. We brought the sun to her bedside where she smiled, her lips craving a kiss to warm the chill of dying. His guitar strumming kept her ears awake, her eyes on him. We brought the middle child, her brown-eyed girl, the concern on her face concealed by the long moments they shared around the space of their hearts. She knew this woman was hers, and they did kiss, and it was warm. And they spoke of summers at the sea, warm tanning in the sand, not the white sheet separating their touch now by threads. I am the firstborn girl doing the bringing. I brought soup and toast and scrambled eggs, boost and pills and lotions, so much water moistening her lips, essentials keeping her breath coming days and nights. She sleeps in the gone children's room. She wakes in my house. The kisses of her children she craves now to free her from this small room with the wide window beside her bed that opens to the front yard and draws her down the sunlit dirt road toward her next children's kisses. Thank you. Thank you. And again, something, I was thinking about how things happen suddenly, things that will um, upset us and destroy us. And, this is something I wrote after, if you'll remember last year, that apartment building in Miami that crashed to the ground all of a sudden. So that's what inspired this, this poem. This is called No Return, Becoming Itself. In the instant the first coil of rebar felt unchecked, sequential cables snap, crackling becomes a construct, a speck of noise directly from nowhere, spiraling next into the nanosecond of sublime come undone. Before the tumbler effect, souls lay knotted above, beside, within each dark birth. Vibrating only breath, the in and out transpiring one way or another, the eyelid dreams of innocence, drowsy slit or opening, sleeping the deep sleep of the tired, the sensitive sleep that lovers conjure, hot summer days sleep, beachy sleep, air conditioned and pillowed fever dreams. Interrupted by unheard scraping, unconsciously unfolding nightmares or the morning's earliest network news. That last past of hand among skin folds seeks sleep beta waves to stir the angels dark and tangled opening in silence and confusion. 
the calm of what's next, always a concern, especially when mismanaged. Who was paying attention? Who was watching the dispatching of structure, the severance of no return becoming itself? The difference between, like always, and just last night, maybe tomorrow, and oh God, no. So this is a poem I wrote about relationships, some that we don't hear about very much, but are happening all around us. This is called Corners. Our home isn't held up by walls or two by fours, not an architect's rendering constructed by carpenters or daydreams. It's held up by our corners, where I wanted to arrange furniture, create nooks for hiding out and time out for making out plumb blocks where ancestors and abstracts hang above our heads at eye level. When you said, be mine, I moved into your corners, arms wrapped, breath shared in the still dark, listening and scared. I brought the furniture, but now so quickly you've torn out my corners, remodeled my shame, sledgehammered my heart. The abuse has eclapped all my weight-bearing walls, my doorways of self-worth, and now I am ripped open, timbers cracked with splinters and nails sticking out sharp as anger and attachment, and you are not. I fear the tools I need to rebuild are laid beneath the smoking rubble of us, and I've only bare hands to begin. In my youth, many, many moons ago, I um, supported myself as a hand weaver, and I started thinking about what it takes to make beautiful, um, utilitarian things with your hands. And I started likening cloth making to peacemaking. So that's what this is about. It's called The Intentions of Peace. You'll want to look your best and feel adequately decked out for the flush of sanity you're channeling. First, you must replace the hair shirt that slapped itself to your back when the piece first left. You may have been in kindergarten then, or someone's lover, or a dove. Burn off that suffocating underthing, not too close beside the forest, don't set the world on fire but blow out bombs bursting in air, embers rising beyond comprehension. Stay until dark after they've flickered out. Frightened and naked, determined beyond shame, build yourself a pine loom by harvesting the tallest rose where the hardwoods once stood. Thread its silicon-bordered heddles with tug-of-war gauze ropes. Plug in technology with your bare hands. Pull beneath you a strong level bench draped in a million rotted flags and dry petitions to support your efforts. The over and under must take as long as it takes, so gather around you the timekeepers, the misremembered bookkeepers of every nation and count with each mark the tactics, orders, armaments, bloodletting and advances, the unending train wrecks and deaths that unravel. Die wasted egos into the fabric that unfolds like a rainbow from your shuttling hands. Take a sip of wine. Now slice with the sharpest scissors you own. The temptation to procrastinate or cut yourself is understandable. Retying the warp and weft of humankind's fucked ways is a crapshoot, but do begin. Throw every piece you've woven to the wind. Storm and tempest will separate your craft into parchments and spears, ripe peaches, plowed fields, and strong ribbons. Exorcise industrial complexity and chemical blindness along the way. You know, the simple stuff. Summon your keenest witnesses to intuitively see the skilled seamstress, a negotiator honored with generations of peace pipes, burdens, pine needles, poetry, and fiddles born of her lap. How does she pull away safely the chamomile leaves from the stinking bandages? 
Bring your hot iron to the task, a shining mirror to reflect salted species and radioactive playgrounds so that finding the intentions of peace in any burnt inhalation will imprint and repurpose more than you can possibly know. Turn up Pandora, Marley, Pavarotti, Cohen, Lennon, McFerrin, some Marvin Gaye, you pick. Set afire wax candles and fortresses of chain, thread, and thorn by the flame. Sew your cut pieces back together with surgical eucalyptus stitches that heal, invisible seams to hold up, even through tonight's ecstatic dancing. Launder your blue planet's cape in hot fresh water and hibiscus. Let the fibers shrink like felt and capture whatever can be swept under billowing furls to uncatalog torture, extinguish invisible gaslights, stop the war, and detonate the addictions to greed and slavery, patriarchy and overthink that we so love. Dress up head and arms folded through the windows and the speeches. Shake out your creation of peace. Spin around in what you're wearing. Steady your eyes on the one standing beside you and toss this living net into Pacific green oceans. Thank you. All right, one more time for Christy Darling. Wasn't that wonderful? Thank you, Christy. I want to start sharing some of the things that we've got coming up here in, um, in the Arts Council. I shared with you the uh, Photography Club's ex exhibit that's going on right now. Um, next Thursday, we'll be having an Artist Spotlight show, which again, as I mentioned, is similar setup of this. We'll have six um, artists perform three songs or our original music and uh, it's a lot of fun and uh, we've got a great lineup for that. There's posters out there that can show you who's going to be performing and something you might want to check out as well. All right, so our next performer is a lady who I've not heard perform and I don't really know very well but I've, I've followed her on Facebook and I'm very connected to the organization that she works with for. She works at Fifth Street Ministries. Um, she's the chief development officer there. And uh, she, she has done an outstanding job already at that organization. And one of the things about her that I'm <clears throat> extremely impressed is she, she shares about herself and things that are going on with her life. And that takes a tremendous amount of courage. And it's something that I'm very impressed with. And um, I hope you are as well. So please welcome Amy Fries. gonna say when I came up that um, this is actually my first time ever attending this event too so um, I'm happy to be here but um, a couple of months ago I just reached out to John and asked a couple of questions and here I am on stage so don't ever ask John any questions <laughs> if you don't want to come perform because uh, you'll you'll be here so um, this may not be the uh, same kind of crowd that watches WWE wrestling um, but hopefully you'll get the reference. It's a thing at our house on Friday nights. Thank you. Um, so there's part of that in here. At least you'll get it, right? Behind the scenes, act one. In the ring, everyone knows it's just pretend. Throwing punches and breaking tables, frog splashes and bouncing off corner turnbuckles. The referee offers a slow count and the pin kicks out at two and a half. Trapped in an ankle lock, unable to escape, mankind pulls out his signature move, the mandible claw. Turning his palm to his own face, two sock-gloved fingers slide under his tongue, pushing until he clumsily passes out. Act two. On the court, a second service return. It was a fluff ball barely spinning, my forehand aimed and ready down the line, deep for the baseline corner. It clips the neck cord and it bounces back. In my high school bathroom, I lean against sea foam green cinder block walls. 
was here scribbled on tan stall doors. Turning my palm to my own face, two salty fingers, black from squishy grip tape, slide past my tongue. In one quick move, my stomach gives up wet cracker crumbs and sour muscadine flesh. Act three, no one knows what really happens behind the scenes. The second one, um, it's just the second one, I'm only doing two tonight, um, doesn't really need an introduction. There are no um, inside things about wrestling. So. At the seams. The first time I wanted to die, I was 14. My mom's sewing scissors, black and rust orange, mangled her last name, all caps, on the right side blade. The same pair sliced through white satin and shaved long lacy sleeves, the dress she made to give herself away. The same pair stitched little girl's clothes, an Easter dress, ribbon cuff, short sleeve blouse, with a sky blue skirt and a tie back bow. The same pair ripped open plastic Barbie packages, but never in the car so as not to lose high-heeled shoes. The same pair wrapped Christmas presents, gliding on slick paper, scraping against ribbon grain to spiral. Tired and overused, they screamed to open. Every trophy around the room, every all-A report card filed away, every college brochure stacked on the table. I stood quietly beside the humming fridge, ice falling into the tray. And then that same pair slid parallel to my wrist, making its mark one more time. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. One more time for Amy. Awesome. Very good. All right, another thing that we've got coming up at the end of the month, one of the things, one of the programs of the um, Art of Arts Council is we are also the host organization for the Full Bloom Film Festival, which is an international film festival held here in Statesville. And uh, this year will be our seventh year of having the festival. I think it's going to be September 8th through the 10th. Got several committee members, Amy's here, a committee member, Soshi in the back. Um, Teresa helps out, um, and it's a great, <clears throat> great event. And um, on the 24th of February, we're going to be showing a sampling of some of the shorts from last year's festival. It's kind of a teaser to start getting people interested in the festival, so come out for that, 7.30. All right, so our next performer <clears throat> is a young man, just started getting to know, and um, just super excited about the collaboration that we're getting, um, starting to have with him. Um, I, we sat down and talked and heard his kind of story of, of evolving and uh, the past he's been on from playing football here in Statesville and playing at uh, college, becoming a, getting his law degree. And I remember when we met and he said, and I, I, I was a lawyer for a while, but it just wasn't quite me. And not everybody's really happy about that when I decided to stop doing that. <laughs> and then I became a teacher. I want to do that for a while, but, but then that really wasn't what I was about. I'm an artist. Not everybody was really happy when I stopped doing that because he's an artist. And now he started a production company. He's working with young artists um, doing their craft, and he's going to share with us tonight. Devin Carr. Well, I don't need to get no bio. Appreciate you, John. Uh, I'm going to do this but, uh, right quick. Check, 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 check. All right, we're going to do it like this. My name is Te Tevin Carr, a.k.a. Eleven. Thank y'all so much for coming out. Um, like he said, uh, I have had many journeys, many endeavors, but I've settled here in music and artistry and expression because I feel that's why I'm most valuable and that's why I can bring my community the most value. Um, tonight I'm going to do probably three 
pieces because I really want to do a piece with my brother um, because he's really the reason why I started doing this and why I started, why, why I got the confidence to even come out here and present this art to you guys. So, yeah, bear with me and enjoy it. Uh, the first one is going to be called uh, Window. Give me a sec. If I told you I was God, would you believe me? Manifesting my vision, put that in 3D. I done lost it, got it back. I'm trying to three-peat. Slim, shorty, peanut butter, trying to Reese. I guess she want to cuddle. I'm just trying to make a play like we just broke the huddle. A lot of guys want the ball, but if I pitch it, they might fumble. Trying to balance being humble and assertive. Nobody's perfect. Fuck trying. Just find your purpose. We run the same race and jump the same hurdle, so why you want to trip a brother up? Shorty tripping. I just chill, because really, I don't give a, I can't let it slow me up. To keep it G and honest, I just want the bucks. If you broken, you black, you just a sitting duck. They'll shoot you from behind. You won't even get the duck. That's why we try to run it up. Try not to rush, but why play it safe when you only getting one life to live? I got to keep it on you, because they like to steal. Ain't no fear in me. I'm God. Do you believe in what you can't see? Do you believe in the window? I hope it is what it can be. I hope he never closed the window. Do you believe in what you can't see? Do you believe in the window? I hope it is what it can't be. I hope he never closed the window. This next one is called uh, Slide. This is a little more, a little more playful. This is, uh, okay, so I had a crush. I'll give you the back, so I had a crush. And uh, you know when you had a crush and you're on social media, you kind of like stalker. And women have a way of letting you know when, um, when they single again. And you kind of like be waiting on that moment like, oh, when is she single again? When is she single again? And you, she'll go that week without posting her boyfriend. You're like, okay. <laughs> Now it's my time. All I need is just one more post about how guys ain't, you know, and how guys is this and guys is that, and I'm sliding. So uh, <laughs> I just wrote something that would be how I would slide in those situations. It's called uh, slide. <laughs> you must be single again. I said, you back to posting. I guess that dude was on that bullshit, and you lactosin. Tolerant. <laughs> Honestly, since you first got with that dude, I thought you was being too modest. You've been that pressure since college. When you stop using your noggin, I'm trying to press up on your body. I mean, you look like a goddess. Don't give up about your mileage. Don't really care who your mom is for the time being. Let's skip all of that. Hop in, hit a home run, still slide in. <laughs> Would make it sing like a violin. <laughs> I think it's about time you got your groove back. It's your turn to be the topic of the group chat. Post a pic like, who mad? Your homegirl's like, who that? 11 with his rude ass? Okay then, girl, do that. Now I'm cooking eggs and just my slippers and your do-rag. <laughs> if I drop the bacon, gotta move back. Watch you walk past in just my t-shirt, girl, don't do that. Cause if I lick the spoon, you know I'll lick your cute ass. <laughs> Ooh, look at you. <laughs> you so damn fine. And from the front, I can see your behind. <laughs> I'm just a player, baby. Please keep that in mind. Nah, this ain't no game, no. You fall in love and suicide. Like, how long you plan on playing this safe? How long you willing to wait? I know you tired of messing with lanes. Come mess with the whiz. The spell is amazing. After you get it, you crave it. Might have to set up surveillance. I'm trying to capture you naked. <laughs> Trying to try out for the Navy, splash. I like that hump on your back. <laughs> I can see the cup on your ass. I bet them curves made your old guy crash, but I'm smooth when I drive, left hand turning the wheel while the other hand gripping your thighs. Two eyes on the road, third eye on your sign. <laughs> if you so wise, Pisces, you would be mine. You know the vibe, you drive me crazy, but could you ride my speed? Two water signs in Venus, we dive right in the deep end. You no, it's just a dream, but we'd rather sleep in like bump reality. Your fantasy is all that matters to me. 
the pleasantries. I'm Johnny Appleseed under your apple tree. No more casualties. Ain't nobody after me. I walk in, you tackle me. You an athlete. <laughs> Ooh, look at you. You so damn fine. And from the front, I can see your behind. <laughs> I'm just a player, baby. Please keep that in mind. Now this ain't no game, no. <laughs> you fall in love is suicide. Thank you. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for rocking with me. I know I'm a little edgy, but y'all vibing with me, and I appreciate that. This last one, um, like I said, uh, my brother Honest is in the back, and uh, I had planned to just have backing tracks and have music going, but you know, God had different plans for you. So, uh, but I do want to do this piece because He really showed me a lot about what I say: put your vulnerabilities on wax in a way to where people can enjoy your darkest moments, your happiest moments. They can be a part of that with you. They can watch you grow. This guy taught me um, how to take those thoughts in my head, put it on a piece of paper to where guys react like you all have all reacted to me tonight. So. Uh, I'm going to give him an opportunity to come up here and perform a piece with me. His name is Honest, Honest Utterance. If y'all give it up for him. <laughs> he brought his girls with him to his little girl. That's just, it's <laughs> my, my heart. <laughs> the piece we're doing is going to be called Can I Be Honest? And um, it's a play on the word honest. His name is Honest, and this was uh, probably one of the most vulnerable pieces that I wrote on my last project. Uh, and it's about uh, breakups and healing from breakups and relationships and uh, just finally healing, I guess. Finally healing and finally looking at yourself and accounting yourself. So can I be honest? I must admit, I smirked a bit when I found out that guy you was with wasn't shit. I mean, that's what you get, no offense though. It is what it is. I wish you the best and even better for your kid. I remember when, but I've been good ever since. Whoever thought if I ever see the day when I would never. Never thought I'd ever shake the blues, but now I'm better. I can finally say that I'm starting to heal. I took a trip, a lot of things were revealed. Seen a lot of flaws, they was coupled with fears. Birth from the traumas I've been ducking for years, but now I spend a lot of time stuck in the mirror, sipping on the tears of the old me. I used to let a lot of things slide, but now I got to slide if you owe me. Why the real guys always lonely? Why the bad girls turn out phony? Why is it the same old dudes that I ain't talked to in years be the same dudes so that they know me and we ain't even homies? You ain't even Brody, but you all on my balls, but you must be a goalie. Hate to see a young dude scoring. You don't see what I'm saying, because I'm Broly. I might bend, but don't break. I ain't folding. I'm the master 11, I'm chosen. Shout out to Rosa. Your womb so golden, how you birth a king so focused? All I ever do is walk in my purpose. Bad little girl want me to flirt, but, want me to cut, but I ain't no surgeon. I be just flirting. <laughs> she want me to dive in, I be just surfing. I be just surfing. <laughs> a lot of things change over the years. A lot of deep pain on the reels. When it rain, let it rain in the veil. Middle finger to the middle fingers. Nah, ain't nothing changed but a nickel. Caution, don't bang when it's brittle. I don't do a lot, I'm just saying you gon' feel it in a little. Gotta keep it hot pot or kettle with a bop or acapella. I'ma kick a game. Little dude switch lanes and I get it. Don't be heartless, where's your heart at? Don't forget to finish out what you started, note to honest. Fortune cookie, ride horse with Mookie. Harlem dookie, change your pamper, what's the answer? I don't know but I'm a panther and I'm not gonna ramble with you. Listen, I've been feeling hella good. Mrs. Yo, baby daddy never could. Difference between me and him, I never would. I miss when we used to end the way it was. Baby Buki gonna make it up. I kiss that with them ankles up. Ooh, who you think you is? I'm just being honest, your highness. I dine at your feet. I done this at least a time or two. I might be toxic, but I promise you, I'll cast this vibe on you. Baby Crocker can arise on you. Maybe we can take a ride or two. Tell me about who lied to you, and I'm sliding through. What your whereabouts? Mm -mm, don't be scared what you worry about. Once we blow it down, we can air it out. And I just pray that every step that I take and every move that I make, help me separate the real from the fake. 
a few years ago. I was stuck in my way, so I wouldn't debate if you said that I changed, but I couldn't give a what you think. Date of birth, eight. I'm just worried about the bank. I'm just trying to show my team how to run the screen because the ops only want to see a brother catch a fade. Stay away from the women who only want to know what you make instead of knowing what you made of. The best part of me is my recipe. I can tell if you dig in the sauce. I just want to be a bill to a boss. If it's like that, put a price tag on your tail and we can put you on the NASDAQ. I used to be a pimp in the past life, baby. Don't give a flashbacks. I'll put you on the cash wrap. Show you how to jiggle out this cash wrap. Tell your ex-man better bag back. Got to move forward, don't backtrack. I called an audible at the line of scrimmage. Shorty with it, ran in motion. She messed with the vision, put her in position, said, don't drop the ball if I up and pitch it. Grab a handful while she washing dishes. You bobbing your head while I'm picking the lesson. Don't miss it. I'm out to the bear like a biscuit. All the riches, it's quite as tempting, but I just want a cottage with a couple slimmies and a couple fences, and that's for you because what we got going ain't your business. Thank y'all so much for your time. I appreciate it. And the next guy up is Joy, and that's my guy. I, I produce and engineer his stuff so y'all can like his stuff too. tall one here. Wasn't that great? Let's give her another round for those guys. Yeah, awesome. Very good. Kind of feel bad now, but I was, I was um, because I was playing, okay, I was, in between I was going to share a poem myself, and so I was like, dang. But I am going to share this poem. It is, um, yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, I am going to share something. It is Valentine's Day, and um, so I'm going to share a poem, a love poem to my wife, Sochi. So it's, it's called Sochi. To a dyslectic boy, her name was a problem. Practicing enunciation was a tongue twister that kept me connected to the awkwardness I felt in trying to become her suitor. It looked exotic and sounded beautiful. It fit her perfectly. She carries her external beauty with an ease that is envious. It was this beauty that drove me to perfect pronunciation. But as our hearts started to connect, it was the beauty of her soul that bonded me to her for eternity. She fought hard to heal wounds that life experiences put on a body and a consciousness. She used those scars created from these wounds, now healed, to create a beauty of their own. This has freed her to explore deeper, finding beauty deep within. She soaks up anything and everything to explore. She uses her dreams as instigators to meaning. She long ago broke down barriers of religion to explore any thread of spiritual understanding, artistic expression for herself and in others has become a portal for developing self. This healing and learning are creating an intuition that is always aware of the health of our connection. She uses this to demand reconnection if she feels the slightest splinter or wedge developing. As someone who always digs deeper holes and thicker walls when emotions take over, she's been a savior of my soul. She's helped me realize, understand, and now experience that loving someone else entirely really is true salvation. Sochi. X-O-C-H-I-T-L, means flower in a long forgotten Aztec language. Watching her blossom into a beautiful, complete, perfect Sochi has deepened my love for her. Sometimes in life, not always, we are blessed with love that transforms us. Loving my beautiful Sochi has changed me for eternity. All right. All right, love you, baby. All right, so our, our next performer is another just young rock star in our community. Um, he texted me earlier because he was, I don't know where you were first in the state, but then you went to Raleigh to deal with a client. Um, he's an attorney as well, locally, and then 
hustled back here um, to perform tonight. He's an outstanding young man. We're grateful to have him on stage, but also in our community. Please welcome Jordan Darty. Thanks for the opportunity, John. Uh, my name's Jordan Darty. I still get nervous doing this type of stuff, so please bear with me. Um, I had a long day, but uh, like John said, uh, it's Valentine's Day coming up, so um, I got some new music coming out, and it kind of revolves around Valentine's Day and being in love and that type of stuff, so um, this is the first one. It's called Hello. We started high with the lights low, and first fast, and we ended slow, and no. She let her feeling, yeah, I know, or well, she's in good hands, like Geico, hold up, I mean State Farm. She let my smile, yeah, turn her on, and we be up until the early morning. It's kind of hard, but I keep it going. So soft, I can smell the lotion. Bed wet, cruising in the ocean, and I'm just going through the motions. Uh, she don't be going through emotions, why? Because we don't never fuss and fight. That's why I need you right beside me here at night. Wake up in the morning, like, what a sight. Mm. Put a ring on it, yeah, I might. Shit, might as well. She fell from heaven, but she been through hell. Learned some lessons, but she doing well. And glowed up if you couldn't tell. And low key, never kiss and tell. And fell in love before I ever felt it. Put my heart, sending in the mail, it's gone. Communication, yeah, we always text. And I told her, baby, I always keep it whipping. Cause these bitches, they gon' test you, uh. When you with me, you ain't even got a sweater. You keep it real with me, then you gon' get the message. I need you in my life, like, forever. And ever, and ever. Now, baby, who gonna do it better right now? I just wanna make this shit right. I'm in a tunnel, but I see the light. I swear to God, she didn't find this. Uh, when I'm away, she be running through my mind. I'm being honest. Uh, uh, hello, your highness. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, your highness. All right. <laughs> All right, now I got my little jitters out. Um, <laughs> uh, shout out to the Arts Council in Statesville. You know, it's a great small community. Everybody love each other. Uh, unlike some of these other towns in uh, North Carolina, um, being a, an attorney is is hell in Statesville. You know, we got a lot of stuff going on. But anyways, back to the love, lovey dovey. Uh, <laughs> I might get carried away sometimes. Like I said, I had a long day, but. Um, Next song is called Down For You. I don't know if you guys have heard Brandy's Down For You. It's an old song. It's a uh, love song kind of too. So uh, it's kind of based off that. But um, it's, it's, and our love is so consistent, so perfect. It's unrealistic. See, I knew you were different. I had to wife you with the quickness. You the type to mind your business. If you real, then you going to feel this. Uh, if you hold me down, we going to stay here. <laughs> Man, no, nah, for real. Mm. If you hold me down, we gon' stay up. Why you wanna fight, you wanna break up. Then you wanna cry, you wanna make up. Like, what the, shit sucks. Yeah, I could be wrong, but I feel like something could be going on. <clears throat> going on. <clears throat> going on. <clears throat> hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, wait, hold up. Let's see, how did it go? <laughs> Catch a stage fright already. Um, oh yeah. Um, if you hold me down, we gonna stay up. Shorty wanna, I'm just trying to lay up. Uh, yeah, I just wanna grind, get my cake up. Shorty wanna spin, I'm trying to save up. Really trying to build a foundation. Mm, yeah, I'm really trying to feel your vibrations. Uh, yeah, stay up in the house and kind of bang roll. I ain't wanna hoe, I need an angel. And you show me that you was loyal. So for that, yeah, I'm gonna spoil you. My queen, bae, you so royal. You the judge and I'm the lawyer. <laughs> you my drug, so I enjoy you. You not fine, bae, you gorgeous. And I don't know if you know this, but baby, you keep me folks. And I know sometimes you want to leave, but if you please stay with me, I swear to God that you gonna see that I might get down on one knee. Oh, transmission like I'm missing, I'm slipping when you're away. I won't wake up with you by my side like every single day. Uh, if you hold me down, we gon' stay up. Uh, man, nah, for real. Uh, if you hold me down, we gon' stay up. Uh, why you wanna fight, you wanna break up? Uh, 
Then you wanna cry, you wanna make up. Like, what the f? This shit sucks, yeah. I could be wrong, but I feel like something could be going on. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate you guys. This is like my third time doing this, and I'm still so nervous, but I appreciate you guys. Uh, keep tuning in. This is the best, best thing smoking in Statesville. <laughs> Jordan Darty, give it up, yeah. All right, if anybody um, is interested in uh, being involved with the Arts Council, uh, we've got our 2022 programs outside. You can check those out. We also, if you're interested in being a patron sponsor, we'd love to have you join us or even join the Arts Council as a member. Again, like I mentioned, all, the, all those dollars help support us, put on shows like this, and, and bring these things to our town. Um, you know, create a little different atmosphere, which is nice. Um, our next performers, man, I love, love this guy. Um, he came out and performed in an artist spotlight, brought his drums one night, he had him in his mama's car, I think, in the, in the back seat, in the trunk. <laughs> and he brought those things up and he just, he lit up the, the house that night. And then he performed here and he, he performs with, um, uh, why am I, go, Corey, right? Yeah, man, I'm sorry. Corey is, is also an excellent guy. Or Corey's a teacher at East Middle School. He's a, a basketball coach. He also plays guitar, keyboard, saxophone. He's just a multi-talented guy. And he's going to um, accompany this young man who just graduated from high school a year ago, right? Two years ago. 19 years old. Uh, talented young man. Um, so please welcome D-Rob Robinson. Oh my goodness, okay, I'm so sorry. So, my name is D-Rob, like he said, and uh, you know, this is Corey, you know what I'm saying? We are also, uh, basically most of the time, a two-piece band, uh, doing shows and stuff like that here and there, you know what I'm saying, gigs. Actually got one coming up this month, you know what I'm saying, in Charlotte, you know, pretty happy about that, you know, so. Uh, uh, it's more in Charlotte, um, I gotta get the name again, I forgot. Ah, <laughs> man. I mean, it has, it's in, it's in Charlotte, but, you know, we'll post that information. We got a page. We really, uh, it's been hard to do work sometimes, like, together, but we work separately sometimes, but he got his things going on, you know what I'm saying? I got my things going on, so we can't always meet, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, most of the time, whenever we link up, you know what I'm saying, it always comes together, you know what I'm saying? The chemistry is there, so that helps out a whole lot, especially sometimes when on the outside world of music, you're stressed out and stuff like that and it'd be like that's your only closet basically to like chill from a whole lot of things you know what i'm saying and then you got somebody else that can just connect with you and y'all go off of each other and just basically vent about what y'all been going through through music music is a language you feel me and rather if it's you know spoken word or like on a track you know what i'm saying lyrics is music you know what I'm saying? If you can relate to it and you know it help you out, not necessarily in the same situation, but metaphorically sometimes, it, it, it helps. So, um, this first song right here, well, I ain't gonna say song, but you know, whatever, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, I called it, um, there's a reason that the rearview mirror is smaller than the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> And um, honestly, the reason that it's named that, I was watching Medea today, one of the plays, the farewell play, and she was uh, she was talking to one of the uh, people. Uh, it was one of the uh, daughters of Cora in the play, 
and she was treating her husband crazy, you know what I'm saying, dealing with her ex-husband over the kids and all that, a bunch of drama, whatever. And she was talking to her, she was like, you too worried about all that back there, that you ain't too focused about what you got going on, I'm pretty sure. All your attention gonna be there, and what you got here gonna be gone, so, you know what I'm saying? I took it in a different way, not necessarily with relationships, but, you know, just some stuff I've been dealing with, so. Looked out my side window to see that they weren't waiting. side of the road but oh, 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 oh no tried my best to face every test that they threw at me but I knew that it was something not growing within me mentally hiding using instrumentally ways to get out of the dark space I felt I was trapped in till they told me a young bug tapped in hung around the old heads that's why they call me OG now because I only pay attention to those that surround me with blessings people with the same focus as me it ain't gotta be the same thing but at least we got that same chemistry Trying to make a better life Can't do that if I'm worried about my old life The things I done then I ain't doing now I was ruining myself then but what am I ruining now? Ain't paying attention That's how I caught myself tripping I told them I was standing strong until I started slipping I said no air for signs in front of me I'm keeping precautions Until they told me I was still raising prices No auctions I was doing it to myself Beating myself down Until they said well what you gonna do when the heat runs out Shiver Cause it's a cold world Had the opportunities but didn't take them Bundle up That's what my uncle told me He said you fucked up But nigga it's over with Excuse my French not out of shape, but bent up. What's wrong with me, they say. I say, got some stuff that's pent up until I decided this was my outlet. A whole bunch of energy, people I thought was brothers, turned out to be my enemies. Sorry, but it hurts. That's just how it works. But there's a reason that the rearview mirror is bigger. <laughs> Catch that. It's bigger than my eyes can see, but there's a bigger surrounding. Why oh, go for ponds where you could fish in the sea? It's a different world to see. And there's a reason that the rearview mirror is smaller than the windshield. Can I, <laughs> can I just point something out, by the way? Um, we did not rehearse that. We just did that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. By the way, what was the key of the next one? <laughs> oh, G minor, G minor. G minor, G minor. G minor. Uh, let me think of this. He's doing this, you know what I'm saying, and it sounds good. Like he said, no, we did not rehearse, you know. Whenever I got here, I was kind of late. But, you know, um, we was out there, and I was like, I mean, most of the time, whenever we play, you know what I'm saying, or got to do something, we come together with it, you know what I'm saying. Most of the time, what we do 
And what it, what I like with good musicians and good chemistry sometimes is what y'all got going on the outside, y'all both just play it out. And most of the time it's crazy when it seems like y'all going through relatable situations. So it feels like everything just supposed to piece together and it come out. So it's like, I was like, I trust you, bro. I ain't, I ain't worried about nothing. You know the key, so it's good. <laughs> so, but I called, um, I was like, I'm gonna call this one Farewell. No demonstration needed. Farewell. I told you too many times, it's however you proceeded. Farewell. Kid you wildin' out and called me conceited. Farewell. <laughs> like, do I care now? A little bit. Why? Because family still exists. But playing with my top like that is the type of stuff that makes me feel like, why did I even take that risk? It was crazy, had a whole bunch of tea. His name was Brisk. I thought it was, but no. He said he was going somewhere, Arizona. No, he came back from there. He said they had too much green. Well, you want herbal, so what else you need? I mean, he said he likes trees, and we know what that means, so <clears throat> we um, but still, I was like, brother, 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 please, talk, 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 talk to me, he ain't wanna do that, so okay, now we find out the next day, there's a problem, well, why did you not say had the chance, opportunity, face to face Too blunt for you, I guess that's why you scared to face But we ain't gonna say that you got baby lungs If y'all know what that means, then this one right here fitting to get fun So, <laughs> I mean, nah, I'm done <laughs> A couple of jokes, nah, okay, I ain't gonna choke This stuff was coming off my mentals, it's how I'm feeling I'm only telling y'all exactly what's been pent up I've been chilling, I've been trying to let stuff Roll off my shoulders, shake it off. Boy, you know you getting older. Stuff I used to do, don't even do no more. Them wild reactions. But people keep playing and testing my patience like I won't give them action. Action pack is all I've ever known. And what I used to do was get beat up and felt so alone. Until anger took over. And then I was like, turning up. Well, I'm strong. I don't know what to do with it though. Hold on. One day somebody tried to test me. I'm like, okay, I'm big boy now. What's up? Everybody said I got size. What's up? Run up. Do what I gotta do. Come back right to it. And just like this, he tell him himself. How did you just start with me? Get beat up and tell on both of us. <laughs> Can't lie, it happened, got witnesses, but it's okay because either way it goes, greatness was what I was destined for. They knew that even when I was a kid, way before I had a clue. And now I'm feeling like each thing I start to pick up now that I don't even practice, Lord, did you help me do this or is it out of the blue? Like, nah, just a simple imagination. Dreams, and dreams work. I made that vision happen, no diamond in my head. But that Uzi still works. If I decide to get itchy fingers, then I ask Tigger to do a spring action work. But we ain't talking necessarily BB, but a king will rise when it comes to strings to make him sing a nice melody. Just to ask him, are you calm now? Yes. Don't you feel a whole lot better now? Yes. Well, then say farewell. To what? All that anger, boy, it ain't even worth it now. Just say farewell. To who? Them people that you thought was real, you know they fake now. Just say farewell. To what? The things that tried to weigh you down the most. <laughs> Just say farewell. Okay, I get it now. Depression. Farewell. <laughs> appreciate it, appreciate it. Already went to the third key. Yes, sir. that's what I'm talking about. You feel me? I told you he raw. You feel me? Just listen, just listen to him a little bit. Just listen to
that little drummer boy get stupid. And this is Valentine's Day, you feel me, Cupid? What you want? I'm arithmetic. You a parasite, difference between these type of ticks. Boom! Hit you right before your eyes, you ain't get to see it. It came up too quick. Zoom! I ain't even talking 4K, I'm talking about a truck, a forklift, 18 willow. You talking okay? No, 24K, go what you have to pay to fix that car insurance. Do you have it? Need that today? No. <laughs> My money and I need it now. That's what I say when I don't work for two weeks and the paycheck is still late. <laughs> and they ask me why. Nah, that's the song that put me in the game. The one that had me down, fell in bad and lame. The one that people said that they was feeling the same. The one I was like, okay, well let me put it on the channel, see what it do. Got a couple of views, not the most. Didn't stop me, shoot, I was working underground. Just to come to the stage at the right time. A brand new host started showing me a different way to go and post, so I said, okay, start a new page. Back in the day, I had a page with a whole lot of views. And this ain't got nothing to do with Valentine. Why? Because I done had too many boobs. Tired of that. You feel me? I had one not too long ago. Starting to feel like a bachelor. At this point, I need to go see a bachelorette. Trying to get wild and loose. Duck, duck, dudes popping heads. Said it's okay, but can I get some? Nah, I'm sorry. She said she got two lips, two sets. I'm just trying to see the gums, but I ain't talking about no, I'm playing. Y'all know what I mean, though. Most of y'all, I'm just saying, y'all older than me, y'all got kids. We know what we're talking about. Let's just be real. We know what it is. <laughs> A little comedy. <laughs> I got jokes. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm getting back in it now. I'm feeling the groove. A Valentine's Day, baby. She wants some real love. So I told her she could get it from me. She said that destiny was the date her off Mac to the day she died. But did she know that he would be the way she died? I heard the tears on the phone. Tears in your eyes, face the face I can hear. Everything. What you say you're trying to hide from me It don't go nowhere You can't play hide and seek I can tell when you off And you are So if I ask you are you okay Don't tell me you tell me tomorrow I can see that you need help And I'm trying to give it to you But if you to tell you to stay this problem is not mine so when i say okay don't think i'm being funny most of the time i know your type really after people like me because you think i got some money i don't left my change on the counter how much do you think i have bills i can pull them out and count it about five fingers all i got no discounts i ain't even talking about palms but i've been gassing on some trees and i'll admit that but either way it goes judgment we don't see none why because we all done did some crazy stuff seen sons and then got burned by something else a different type of lesson that i had to keep to myself Try not to put everything out Cause everything ain't meant for everybody else to know I had to learn that the hard way at a young age And I'm still young, so what does that say? <laughs> Shout out to my uncles, you feel me? <laughs> the people that I hang around with call lame <laughs> The ones that put me ahead of the game <laughs> The one that you think you up in But you still playing the same. If you keep playing the same and you've been losing, how you think you fit in the game? Knowledge, you obviously not paying any attention. If black suit don't make you venom, but if carnage pop out, then what you fit to do? You unprepared. <laughs> Your own flesh and blood be the ones to take you out. This be crazy. A different type of attack. The heart attack is different. Wasn't even caused by sodium or none of that. Cholesterol, I'm really in good health, but it was my mental state that had me feeling like I was close to death. So why is that? give you the reason to think that just because you got issues 
That it's okay to take yours out on me But can't handle when I have one mental breakdown One sided lane You catch your head on collision every time When you trying to go two separate ways Gotta think smarter Especially if you want to be with me on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Thank you, D Rob and B Corey. What's up, guys? Thank you so much. Rob and Corey again. That was awesome. That was great. Talent, real talent. Appreciate that. Speaking of talent, this is our next person coming up. Um, she came and performed in our first show and is back, been back now, I think, for every one of them, which has been awesome. And one of the things I really like about her is she's uh, somebody who um, has committed her life to helping others and what she does professionally as well. And so many people um, that come up here and do this kind of stuff tap into that kind of energy. And, and she's definitely one of those people. So please welcome Elaine Hill. Yo, hey guys. I completely didn't know he was talking about me. I'm like, talent, who could that be? <laughs> okay, um, so my name's Elaine, and um, man, this has been incredible. Like, like everybody that has touched this mic, I mean, everybody in the audience too. The, the, that's the funny thing that if you're in the audience, you don't know that you are feeding us as much as we feed you when you're here. So, um, so thank you all around. It's just a big happy love circle. Um, only in consensual ways. Okay, <laughs> thought that was important to say. So, um, Valentine's Day, right? So I'm actually going to go to the other side of love. So um, I ain't trying to do that thing where single people are telling them everybody that they're single. Um, and I have some poems about breakups that I'd like to share tonight um, because sometimes long relationships are hard and sometimes you lose them when you weren't planning on it. <clears throat> Instructions for survival of hypothermia. Beleaguered by cold, the spine racks in shivers, knocking to bones, tips of toes, vertebrae unfold, refold to the cat cack of teeth in danger of hypothermia. Winter bones grow cold from overexposure. The man cannot feel his extremities. Strip him naked. Relieve the weight of frigid cotton. Press icy chest against warmth of nipples. Groin to groin the house of our infants to his nectar cup. No life survives in this bitter cold. Body's shelter falters in frigid temperatures. Feet entangle blue around edges. Breathlessness is a shallow excuse for love. Fingers, icicle sheaths, feign intimacy. We, paper-wrapped peddlers in this grim wasteland, frost mosaics on cheek, blood vessels constrict, yearning for heat, it is all we have, these spines parallel to the earth, bending under each shiver. Surviving this bitter quaking demands threes, the hollow of his body, the land of sheets gathering like congregants to the holiness of touch and unclothed, a remote source of warmth. We do not speak. Holy fire transforms with every rise and fall of chests, pressed and beating slowly, closing the gap in degrees. Next poem. Have you ever seen ruffled feathers shake the rain out of down at dawn? Each heart 
is a bird, needs air to fly, why we breathe all the time, our flight buoyed by swaths, painting a sky for a chest, yet do you not see? Flocks fly from repose when in danger, when you left at the cusp of dawn that day, every single day since, cluster of wrens scatter through morning light softness, my heart Avian within does not recollect how to land. A quivering of wings over leaves like kaleidoscopes of dewdrops. Hover over tears of God or the children who are the only reason you'd stay. The opposite of love is I don't care anymore. Do you not see? You are always leaving. Birds in the cold wait. Before beings lived in sky and water, day four in a Middle Eastern garden, glittered expanse above is vacant of the living. When you leave, hollows where birds once flew undergo gradual anti-creation, a move back into the void where spirit breathes over the chaos of water, shadow and starlight residues fold into feathers, berry beaks. To coexist means you choose not to depart but not to stay, which is to leave. Sparrow and all is uncreated in blue unknowing. In deep pool sky, do you not see birds shake themselves loose from earth, crack into the shape of hearts, hover into the space before puddles, before leaves on trees, before we spoke vows? Thanks for going on this journey with me. <clears throat> Everything I learned in school seems to be all that's left of my mind. Because what happens when you graduate from your life? What happens at the end of the podium when the ones who have taught you shake your hand and send you on your way without a speech, without even a warning that school is ending, no bells are ringing? I guess I really believed wedding bells had more permanence than an 18-year degree. I wish this education had been free. Or I had invested a little less than everything. Suddenly, I'm back to the first day, get carried away, yellow school bus tests and block schedules that ring in circumferences of alcohol hall and coffee shops and wondering what year is it anyway math class first see time has exploded into fractions of family am I one half of a whole or a whole minus one I have been a theoretical math person but this house is dividing in solid space and I am not supposed to be a quotient or my heart some kind of potion that prevents the whole thing from factoring into quadratics where is the remainder the constant multiplied by x to balance this equation is not the heart the soft thing not linear or even multi-dimensional after I've done my times tables around and around this relationship, trying to understand the multiplication of misunderstandings, not to mention decimals, holding empty space where value could be. If you divide by zero, the answer is undefined. I know what that feels like now. The weight of empty, with heart racing, cylinders pumping, speedway can't breathe, the body has yet to move because steel beams and cages lock in. Is family a prison or a death sentence? If family is a prison, then we are given a life sentence and a death sentence. Well, begins with till death do we part. Now we are in English class playing with opposites and adjectives like life and death are all a game, just a theory presented in class for consideration or rejection, schooling each one on complete sentences in past tense when I'm arguing for the present. Isn't the subject subject to a predicate? Doesn't the I in this sentence need some action verb, something to define the she diagrammed in this line? Is this even a complete thought? Does this have the makings of a story? What is the ending? Are we ready to label denouement? Or has the storyline even reached its climax? I'm so over the drama, I'd rather read Shakespeare. Try to speak some old English since it makes more sense than this gibberish. The glottal stops that aren't even found in this language. The poetry lacking complete sentences. The sentences unfinished. Death of a life sentence multiplying this year. This degree of permanence reaching the end of a podium. I didn't know the fall was so long in coming. Thought I'd graduate with honors in the spring if I graduated at all actually didn't know graduation was a thing with this wedding ring degree
thank you. None of those are in my book. <laughs> I have a book coming out. I'm trying to decide if it needs to be under a pseudonym or not. So <laughs> I'll just say that. <laughs> um, the way to experience grief. I have read this one here before. So um, The way to experience grief is to come back to yourself. This is a love poem to the dark. I have trembled, been helpless to its touch. These walls hem me in, envelop me, a sulfur fog, moments so slow, my breathing, it could be the death of me. Take my life and wring it to its only natural conclusion. The ground slips from under me with every step. Another heartbeat slips out from my breast. I sit on the edge of the bed, just breathing in, then out, knowing the water of the ocean keeps coming regardless of the drought. Breathing in, then out. Grief's messy, chalk-covered painting. It's not weird. The hot of regret, cold of refusal, washing like waves. This is a love poem to the light. So constant, brilliant, Beckoning, hiding, shadows are deepest when the light shines brightest. Grief shows up when I least expect it. It's okay when I only sense the light somewhere out there waiting. When I am ready, it is there whispering, hey, this is a love poem within. Holy, sheer, willing to stay open to the possibility that this time I will not die. Complete, unrequited longing. Love is not as much a, an arrival as a stay within the tide. Mountains only move when the heart behind them is unaffected by the outcome of their movement. Earth shifts only when no one is paying attention. This is a love poem to cycle. Cicada song sounds in trees. The crushed shell on the sidewalk is no longer needs filling. Metamorphoses are all around. Even breath flowers into rebuilding every ounce of a body. Cocooned caterpillar releases into primordial mush from whence wings are formed. There's nothing Instagrammable about this process. Souls feel the burn as they transcend. This is a love poem to myself. I have been afraid of the dark, faced grief to find dawn emerging, a sliver of pink along tree line after deep blue covering of night. Graceful strength is in the fight out of the encasement. I see courage to fight wings back into the light. Let stars guide the formation of a flight body. This is a love poem to beautiful waking, perched bedside breathing, ocean washing, mirror longing to knowing more about love than I do about trusting myself to say so. Grief, the deep that turns ends into beginnings. And last one, I just wrote this this week. Um, new, new ink, ink new, treep. Um, Begin Again is the current working title. A dandelion bursts through a crack in the sidewalk. Like David erupts from stone under Michelangelo's chisel. When Lazarus emerges, emerges from the tomb, Jesus invites the community to remove the grave clothes, those stringy, smelly robes that cradled him close to the heartbeat of the dance of death. So many miracles emerge from rock, screaming, life, 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 and the tip of a knife or the pressure of the earth in the quiet press, lack of breath are merely tools of the trade of transmutation the emerging of a new work of beauty from a constricting foundation. Even though it hurts, it unfurls like pearls strewn so diligently before one that will delight in the creation, like the God who made them twirling so thrillingly above, beside, and around us as we hang out in our earth suits, breathing. When we feel the breaking of our heart, the power of art is no more for the swine, but for those who feel the way the cracks and openings allow for more light and more light and more light because God made all light and claps when we bend the rays in such a way by breathing to rainbow the sky with all that we have ever cried over. Thank you. So 
so I do, there are some things out there. So if you guys would like to support me and um, the other artists, their people, it's possible to do and do so. Thank you so much for your time. One more time for Elaine Hill. Yeah, and, and thanks for bringing that up, Elaine. There are some, um, some of the folks that brought some of the stuff that they've published, and it's out there if you're interested. Uh, check that out. Um, all right, the next artist is a young man that I didn't realize I knew for <laughs> until we met again several years later. Um, he came to the Arts Council, we started talking, and realized that um, when I was a CEO of an organization that he, in, in our um, training session for new employees, he sat in there and listened to me, to me um, talk about my agency and he, him as a new employee. I don't think he lasted very long. <laughs> but he definitely had a, a heart for working with kids and trying to help others. And, and uh, he's a great fella, and he's somebody we're talking tonight about how he's rarely uh, focused on being his true self as an artist and expanding on that. And you're going to hear that tonight. He's an outstanding performer. Please welcome Jot Pilgrim. <laughs> This is just a rehearsal, but when we get to heaven, we're going to really sing. This is just a rehearsal, but when we get to heaven, we're going to really sing. This is a homemade melody. I can take it everywhere with me. Take it all in. Build up my defense, because they keep telling me that melodies can't pay rent. And it's a homemade melody. I be in and out of therapy. Shit get dark and grim. Take it all in. These melodies, the only thing that ever made sense. I've been out on this road. I've just been in this mode. When nothing else matters, just me and my goals. It's a cold, sick world. It's chicken soup for the soul. I keep bounces the road, because I be missing my woes. I just need to go home, but where's home? In a room full of people still feeling alone. Out here on my own, still I stay in my zone. So much you can say in a poem. And it's a homemade melody. Remind me of my roots and my history. I take it all in, this is my spin. Grab my pen, it's a series of unfortunate events. And it's a homemade melody. I ain't chasing cloud or celebrity. I take it all in, I take it all in. Cause these melodies the only thing that ever made sense. And I've been out on this road. I've been filling my oats. The answers used to be on scrolls. Now all you do is scroll. Shit's out of control. I keep my enemies close, but the backstabbers look like my folks. I just need to go home, but where's home? They gentrify blocks, they're enterprise zones. I can't write wrongs, I just write poems. I can't write wrongs, I just write poems. And it's a homemade melody that the world didn't give to me. I take it all in, cause I'm the guardian of the every ounce of energy that I expend. And it's a homemade melody. Woo saw before I commit a felony. <laughs> Shit get dark and grim. I take it all in. These melodies, the only thing that ever made sense. And this is just a rehearsal. But when we get to heaven, we're going to really sing. And this is just a rehearsal. But when we get to heaven, we're going to really sing.
Hey, hey, y'all. How y'all doing? So, uh, I'm uh, Kevin Mills. I go by Jot Pilgrim. Uh, I started with that one because that one, I, I was most scared to share that one. If you know me, when I come here, I get the hard stuff out the way first. Um, so now uh, we can just chill and talk. Uh, that one is just um, near and dear to my heart, okay? And uh, when I come here, I like to connect with people and I like to be authentic to myself. I am a writer, a poet, an artist, a painter. Um, I was put on this earth to create and share. And so I am happy, glad to be here to share with y'all tonight. So this next poem uh, is February. Um, close to Valentine's Day, um, and everybody shared poems and um, pieces about love, and um, love for me is one of the uh, greatest things to write about, and then it can be one of the least, one of my least favorite things to write about. And so um, this poem I'm gonna share with you right now is a poem I wrote, and this is called Settlement. You toxic, combination of Aphrodite and Jezebel. <laughs> but I douse myself in kerosene, cut a deal with Satan himself just to prove a settlement can yield a reward. Wage war, put up a fight, change my perspective on how I'm handling life to show you strength that's sometimes obscured by yours, the Amazonian type. Conflicted Cleopatra caught up in the rapture of your role in what ifs. But what if you settled? I'd make you so proud to approach the podium with your bronze medal, they have to sing your country's anthem. A toxic tandem of I'm yours, but I'm not sure forever, but I'm not sure, but I'm sure. I pledge my allegiance to a goddess sequestered in shimmering sequence because lo the world loves sequins. But I love your scars, battle tested, and maybe you deserve a discharge no matter how dishonorable it seems. I'm devoted to dreams and the silver lining can't ha ha hold back showers when lightning strikes, but I'll fight, bunkered down, waited out, save her somehow as she retreats from the threat of storm clouds and thunder that echoes. But what if you settle? I'm not exactly ideal, but I know exactly what I feel. And amidst the cyclone of confliction and conviction, I may have found addiction. And I won't kick this habit as the voice of reasoning resounds in the treble. What if you settle? Yeah, so keep in line with that theme. As y'all can see, it gets kind of rocky with love. It is tangible. I think it is how I can connect to you and you can connect to me and we can see beyond our differences. Um, so this next one uh, is a little bit on the lighter side of love and um, it's called Stardust. I replayed this scenario in my head just for the purpose of staying sane and grounded in reality an alternate universe where you and I and forever doesn't exist, and frankly, it doesn't exist. I'm drawn to you the way eyes are drawn to a field of stars. To say it's meant to be is crazy, right? In a world where we try love, love fails us and we move on. To say you are my promise, to say it is written in the stars. Google says, the gravitational collapse of an astronomical object due to the influence of its own gravity is what tends to draw matter inward towards the center of gravity. A star is born through the gravitational collapse of a cloud of interstellar matter. And your eyes look like new stars in my presence. They shine as bright as they ever will. When I was younger, I remember my grandmother. She kept a jar high out of reach of me and my sister. She placed it on the very top of a cedar dresser she owned that stood nearly seven feet tall. And we'd ask grandma about the contents of the jar and she'd never tell us. 
And one day after me and my sister petitioned her to finally tell us what was in the jar, she whispered, stardust. And I believed her. The same way I believe that in this infinite universe, two people could be destined to be together. The same way I believe that some cosmic tether that will keep us connected when we're galaxies apart. I think now I want to believe in Starbust, Stardust because I want to believe in us. Convention has killed fairy tale endings, and I'm still stalling to get to the happy ever after before the credits roll. I'm still living to make your dreams come true. And if grandma could bottle up the residual of celestial bodies, then why can't we chart a course for forever and actually arrive there? Call me naive, but I sprinkle every doubt with grandma's stardust. I've learned to see the mystical and the mundane. I've learned to see Saturday nights during Manic Mondays. I've learned we might find forever someday, one day. So I'm not some hopeless romantic hung up on something that has run its course. I'm the stargazer that's yelled, why? When they say all good things come to an end. I'm the one willing to commit to the notion of soulmate and I'm not leaving this planet without her. Maybe there was something common in that jar, like grandma's tobacco stash or spare change for a rainy day. Maybe it was some everyday commodity like true love that doesn't last, like broken homes and messy divorces. But I still believe in stardust. I still believe the extra extraordinary in moments where love enters a union as fast as the speed of light. A study back in 2017 provided more evidence that human beings may very well be made of the stuff of stars. The research found that the elements responsible for life are more prevalent in stars. And the elements responsible for my life are more prevalent in you. And that's why you radiate the only light that can pierce light years of dark space. So I try to think of this parallel dimension where we don't finish each other's sentences, where we don't feed off each other's attention, and where you don't bear my name and my young princess. A place where you'll never know how much you truly mean to me, and I might have more success there and more possessions. And there may as well be somebody new there, but I'm here to say we're meant to be, and that's just crazy. But I believe in stardust. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so sticking with that theme, y'all. <laughs> I have one more for you guys. Um, again, I just want to thank John and Arts Council for having me. Um, I really feel comfortable on this stage. Thank you, guys. I am just love sharing with you guys. Um, so here we go. This last poem is called uh, A Variant. Uh, and here we go. It's officially been years, and you and I wear masks most of the time. We've become experts at safely distancing ourselves. We isolate, only to be bombarded by a new variant. And this strain of love differs from the one the old folks used to warn me about. I did not heed warning. I did not heed warning. Thought I built some tolerance. Thought if I had a little bit in my system, I'd be more prepared when the real thing came around, just like a vaccine. What good is love if you don't get boosters every once in a while, just like a vaccine? What good is this year's batch when it keeps changing, growing, mutating? This can't be the kind of love the old folks issue warnings about. The kind of love that turns social media posts into press conferences. A far cry from the love granddad lobbied for. Convince me love isn't a variant. Don't we argue about which guidelines to follow? To protect ourselves from the spread. Protect ourselves from exposure. Because we've seen classic case studies where love just made everyone involved sick. I shut you out today in fear I might catch something. I've seen what it does to a man. I've seen what it feels like to be alive and watch a death toll. To usher in life 
to a world that's in collapse. To be shot by a Cupid or a licensed practitioner, you really are my love bug, my carrier. So like most people across the nation, we draft our own protocol, boundaries we operate in to assure we stay healthy, wash our hands with the matter, while the world deploys new ways to love. Maybe we'll change enough to last long on this surface, make the most out of our contact time. This time's version of love will always differ in some respect to the forms of that four-letter word, always differ from the standard. This can't be the kind of love the old folks issue warnings about. Variant. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jot Pilgrim. Thank you, Jot. That was awesome. Thank you. And uh, we've got one last performer before we do. Let's, uh, let's give a round to all the performers tonight. They're awesome. I hope everybody's enjoyed this. Um, and uh, you can watch it on um, our YouTube channel or Facebook page. We're live streaming it. And we also will be pulling out a video of each performer. Uh, one one, one, uh, one poem each, and we'll post it over the next couple months. Um, all right, our, so our last performer um, is, is performed here once before. I started following her on Facebook, and, and she's involved in everything. I mean, she's, she's performed. I, I think this week you did something yesterday, the day before. You're doing something tomorrow. She does coaching. Um, she does workshops with kids, teaching poetry. Um, personal coaching, and she has um, just a real great uh, message that she focuses on of, of um, you know, care and love and um, just an outstanding person. So please welcome Shane Maynard. That's easier. Okay. Dang, y'all don't know your own strength. Um, first of all, I don't know whose idea it was to bring the Jelly Bellies, but I love you. Thank you. I am obsessed with Jelly Bellies. Me and Elaine got so excited that Elaine was like, oh, God, I have to tell Shane. And she pulled out her phone and she was like, you're here, Jelly Bellies. And that's how excited I am about the Jelly Bellies. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so this happened this week. And this is for my students. I think the title is going to be, they're not Pokemon. When the woman at the program meeting asked me, how can we get more at-risk teens involved in her seasonal program, my response was, isn't every teen at risk? Can you be a bit more specific? To which she replied, Oh, you know, the teens who are underprivileged, underserved, and usually reside in juvie, alternative schools, and group homes, the demographic you work with, your students. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, first of all, my students, my students have a hard time seeing themselves in your flyers since all the teens in the pictures are prim, proper, smiling. My students stop calling themselves youth after being shot, after being ripped from homes and having to make it on their own. So they're having a tough time relating to your verbiage, have a hard time committing to 16-week sessions when they keep getting bounced between facilities, county lines, and families. My students want to know how come your website says accessible when they can't fill out the forms or have access to email. My students are confused because you say you want to meet them where they're at, but you don't come to the group home, the jail, or the school. My students want to know why the teachers can quit and walk out, but they can't. My students want to know how come it's called restorative justice if they can't get out of the environment where they got the charges at. 
My students want to know how they're supposed to please their parole officers when half the school are drug dealers, when the staff is more concerned about school shooters than what's going on under the bleachers. They want to know, uh, where's the safe house for leaving gangs to come to your program? And are you going to replace what they gave, put clothes on their back, food in their mouth like their boys did? Will you take a bullet to take them to school? Because, you know, they be shooting before the bell's ringing. And they're at risk for being shot if caught on the block at the wrong time. My students want a written commitment stating that the money sold from paintings that painted will actually go directly to them and not your nonprofit. My students want to know, what's it going to cost them? Because they got siblings they need to take care of. And are you going to offer daycare? Can they tag along? I'm sorry, long story short. But if you want to serve this demographic, I think you're going to have to change more than your programming, more like your whole business model. You can start by being a resource instead of robbing them of them. So I have an apology I need to make publicly. <laughs> Dear Mrs. Williams, I really, really apologize for my behavior last night when I busted into the lobby of Oakwood waking you up. I know that women your age think that young ladies should behave with grace, and I admit I was drunk, loud, and you deserve your rest. I didn't mean to be so abrasive, but you refused to answer my questions. See, I was looking for my grandmother who resides here. You see, her daughter, my mother, is dying. And I know if I visited more during visitor hours, I would have been able to find her. I found you instead. And you know about the flowers gifted by your family. I figured you were a mother too. See, my mother couldn't answer me due to the tubes down her throat. Her last breath pushing like they were fallopian to be reborn wherever it is we go. Y'all, her closed eyelids filled to the brows with tears like two cupping palms holding the Dead Sea still. When I asked the nurse why that is, she said, we don't know why they do that. As dehumanizing as her language, Mrs. Williams, it wasn't an answer, and I am tired of silence from the living and the dead. So I came to wake every grave here at Oakwood Cemetery on a drunken binge of grief to rattle my grandmother's corpse from her mausoleum. Fuck your rest in peace when your rest brings no peace to the living. Mrs. Williams, your grave looks so tidy. I thought you were a woman who knew how to keep things in order. You know, finish what you started. I guess I'm mistaken. The cleanliness is actually next to lies and secrets and God must be a hoarder. Cause if no one knows anything's wrong, nothing can get messy with emotions. Did you tell her what was wrong? Is a woman sentenced to silence from birth to grave. It's a wonder we don't come out the womb with our tiny clenched fists and our tiny clenched mouths to stifle the scream the doctor slaps out. Did you know that mothers who keep things clean by suffering in secret make loud messes of daughters that the world doesn't know how to clean up? Is your daughter screaming drunk across some woman's grave looking for the answers you never gave? Sometimes the dead need waking up. How is it fair that the living go on without knowing and the dead get to know everything without sharing did you say goodbye? Did you leave her anything other than antiques? Her siblings would split off the family tree fighting over and a grief counselor with the audacity to ask, what have I learned? And what have I learned from this? Except that no one has an answer on how to put grief to rest, only how to bury emotions so deep you take it with you once you're dead. Mrs. Williams, if you see my grandmother up there, you tell her I want to know what heirloom of trauma cross-stitched our silence in the rocking chairs on the porches of our past. And one last thing, you tell her I'm ripping apart every quilt to expose the needlework that's been done because, by God, when I have a daughter, I intend to tell it all. Okay, an actual love poem. Uh, this is for all the wild women in here. I was worried, thank you to all the people dropping in curse words earlier because, you know, sometimes my poems are centered around an entire curse word itself. And I really, really love this poem and it makes me feel really empowered when I do it. And I think that it 
empowers all the women in the audience when I do it too, so you know, we gonna do this. Okay. Be careful, men, we out here. All right. Just saying. If my fiance is watching, this is not about you. I love you. This is the ones before you. It's, it's all good. Just I'll talk to you when we get home. All right. <clears throat> he was cute until he called me bitch. And then I was like, bitch, <laughs> bitch, oh, bitch. Honey, after the club, and I took you home, told you I was done to put your pants back on and go back to your yard. You looked at me as if you'd never seen a dog before. To the boys, I've broken. Yes, I enjoyed the snap, crackle, pop of your pleas between sheets. Your inferiority was my breakfast for an unbalanced morning. You didn't know that when you starve a bitch in heat, she will bite the hand that feeds. She will feast on men who claim to be wolves. For years, I swallowed spoonfuls of your spite every time the spittle of my shine leaked from my lips. Honey, the only language you ever listened to was these hips. Couldn't stand to see me on stage like a big dog, but you forget. Shakira also sang about a she-wolf, how these thighs rise with the moon can bury you under opal ovaries and bloom. Honey, women can be hunters too. You can also be seen as a piece of meat, food. I have told you not to come in here unless you're ready to ride bareback on barbed wire because my love be a junkyard and this bitch be a Rottweiler. I have collected every crashed Casanova collision from boys who tried to crush me in their crushes, tried to leash me to a house only big enough to lay down in, tried to step for wife me into a picket fence. I have mangled every muzzle you have clasped on me in fear that I would bark back up your bones. Didn't want to admit you offered your own body up. The only thing you ever caught, dog catcher, was feelings. Didn't you see my hunger? Recognize it as your own. You know, you can see the ribs of a bitch who's starving. Did you want to take your rib back? Are you mad that I took your spine instead? But wasn't the taste of the kill delicious? And wasn't I the beast you always wanted? You knew what this was. By the growl in my groin, boy, you were dinner. Just three courses steaming against a bedpost. Your ego, my dessert. Oh, honey, didn't you see my teeth from the dance floor? <laughs> Okay, and last one for the wild ones. I have had, um, those who know me know, I, I grew up traveling, I grew up on the road, I grew up around the Hells Angels and construction workers, it was a very wild life, okay? And um, I'm writing a book that will be like my memoirs poetry book that's about that and about how most people say, oh, you were thrown to the wolves, but I felt very much like I was thrown to the humans. So trying to learn and unlearn the things, the way in which I was raised in a gang-like atmosphere is not the way the world operates. And so trying to navigate that and find my own way has been very interesting. And this poem speaks to that. And this is about how I've had a very tough time finding relationships that work for me, um, that will feed me in the way that I need to be fed, that, that wildness. And that there is a difference between wild and reckless and finding that balance and honoring that within yourself so that the shadow work you know, does not take over. Um, if I could part one thing with you, I think, you know, um, it was a meme on social media about um, the Cherokee story about there's two wolves inside of you and the young warrior is like, oh, which wolf wins? And like the, the medicine man's like, the one you feed. Well, there's more to that story. If you, if you neglect the, the bad, the shadow, it will try to eat the other. And that's where we get self-sabotaging traits. So find out what need is not being met and feed that thing healthy food. Um, I did a meditation practice uh, where I was face to face with myself and it was in the form of like, I'm also French Indian, that's why I'm sharing this with you. Um, I lived on the reservation when I was younger and um, I had this thing where it, the coyote like came to me and it said, you are what you eat. And I keep that, I keep that here. Every time you make a mistake, remember, some, something is not being met. If you, if you do something that's self-sabotaging, so what is the need? Find out what to feed it, okay? This poem is, is that. All right. One morning I woke up with the spiders of sleep still biting. 
after a night of struggled rope, soul full of holes that have become the potholes that won't let me make the move to go. I woke up with lungs full of carbon monoxide, face still peeling itself off the driver's side window, fingers still pressed like the last grip I got left, like a death wish, like an original sin, like the first kiss that's the last on the lock and a growling engine below my navel, pissed off that I don't know how to drive proper. Stumbled to the mirror to wash off all that desperation only to discover this thing that is eating me from the inside out cannot be cut out, and I am a shoddy surgeon. It cannot be hunted, just retargeted, and you, you got a bull's eye for a body. My head, my head still hissing, full of wildness, steam, and snakes, vicious for what it craves. Medusa's head turned on itself. I woke up a cave, a cave rattled by my own echoes. God, it makes my bones turn to stone before it crumbles. Some nights, y'all. Some nights I swear, behind the boiling of my ears, I can hear the wind whistling Dixie through my longing, waiting on me to kick rocks. But this thing in front of me feels like a boulder. I feel like an atom bomb, blown inside out and stuck in frustration that these four walls surrounding me are still standing. Y'all, some nights I choke on the rubble. Some nights, y'all, it feels like I'm pulling the hair out of the howl by the handfuls, drawn deaf by my own lust. But let me get to the point. It gets so heavy, carrying all these souls around, and sometimes my heart pushes the pins so far out it stabs anyone within a radius of love me. And you won't understand this. How can you be two inches from me constant and I still feel so lonely? See, this car seat is melting, driving home with all this fire behind my flesh out of control. All this carbon backing up, backing up into my lungs. And the silence that you offer is not enough to stop me from jumping the gun, to stop me from saying I'm done. I can't fucking breathe with your hands bound and binding me. I am two steps into a waltz off a flat line. I am standing on this fault line, waiting on the one reason to feel what it's like to free fall, but I will make you all an offer. If anyone will come with fist and hammer to bring the end, I will backflip off this son of a bitch into life. God, some nights I am one degree from fever, wondering how this metaphoric gun got in my hand, one itchy trigger away from our bonded bloodshed, one step away from runaway, and I dread and long for the dawn where you, my love, will finally wake, see me for what I really am. Thank you, y'all. Told you she was something, right? That was awesome. Thank you, Shane. Awesome. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed it. Uh, we'll do this again um, in April. Check us out on Facebook and social media, Instagram. Um, to check out the next show and the other stuff we got going on. And thank you all for coming. Thanks. Thank you.